Where are the eyes? <laughs> I put them in my pocket. It's for later. <laughs> no, but that's actually done with the CGI, so. Uh, that, was, that was a question I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. CGI. He's pretty good at it, though. Eyes look pretty amazing. So where does, uh, where, do, where, do, where does Julia head this season? It ends, is, ends in a very interesting place in season. It really did. I thought that was pretty exciting. You know, um, I just got our first script for season two. That's the only information I've gotten so far. Um, and it's, it's a big, mysterious, are you kidding me? Of course, because it's sci-fi and it's Helix. Um, but I think... You know, the writers spent a lot of time with uh, revealing who Julia actually is last season, um, although there's still a lot of mystery to that. And they really loved to put me through the ringer. <laughs> so I think this season, she's a different person now. She's lost a lot. A lot has been taken from her. And so there's going to be a lot that she's going to do to try to keep surviving and and make things right but there's there's a sense of um, how do I fit into this new world so she might be playing on both sides and we're, I don't really know yet and they haven't told me yet which one is genuine and which one isn't so it's going to be pretty interesting to see where she goes and how she goes about like to be a double agent well that's you know the more the better I felt very fortunate because I, I there was nothing straight line about my character or anything I went through on the show it was it was a huge emotional journey a creative journey physically um, just with the virus tracking the virus because we were block shooting so episode four I'm you know three I'm sick four I'm getting worse and then five is getting really bad six I'm dying so because we were block shooting and doing things sometimes I, I, I had to use a lot of just my physical background to track now we're doing this scene so you have to go back to how you were in four and now you've got to develop it worse into episode six so that was just a lot of fun and it just it, it, as an actor when you get to bring all of your background to it and, and have that much creativity and you know emotional journey and everything it was a whole package so yeah, they loved to, they loved to uh, torture me. <laughs> but that's a good thing because when storytellers want to torture characters, that means they're really, really, really important. So. Yeah, so, it's true. So. It's true. Yeah, yeah. They, they, it's a great character. There's so much happening with her that it's just, it's it's an honor to play. Which of the uh, twists that the character went through surprised you most when you read the script? Surprised me most um, the hallucination stuff. I thought that was beautiful and interesting, and I was not expecting it. Um, because to find out that I've been here, I grew up here, and how, and the way that they had me discovering my past, I just thought was fascinating. And, and also because of the things that weren't answered about how come I forgot everything? What happened after this that made me literally have no memory of anything, you know, until I'm dying and I'm struggling for survival. So her fight to survive was just um, you have to admire it and then what they what they created with that I mean that weird Thanksgiving scene and the little girl I just thought it was really cool and, and beautiful and, and just an interesting dark uh, place and a way for the audience to connect to the character and have empathy for her um, when every everyone else who had the virus people were watching it from the outside they weren't connected to it they just went oh that's gross or that's too bad for you but with Julia they were in it with her and it was so I thought that was really interesting and sorry, another cool part about it, um, our director Brad Turner, and he was one of our producers, and he he talked about he was worried because he said you never take a leading actress and and make her look awful like this for you know what I mean, and, and just do this whole thing on TV. They always try to keep it a little bit lighter. This is this. I said you gotta go for it, man. Like I'm skipping the makeup trailer. She's dying. Um, but it, it, I, I think if we tell the story well, then they're not going to care about that kind of stuff. And so I, I thought that was. That was fun. You know. <laughs> what drew you to uh, take this part? Well, it was a job. And I'm an actor, and I like working. Um, no, what I, I just I loved how she was written. I'm, I like sci-fi too, and but I like uh, good sci-fi. You know, the hokey kind of stuff. And um, she's just a really she's a well-written character. She's accomplished. She's intelligent. She's a grown woman. She's flawed um, she's just got a lot going on and um, she exists for reasons outside of her ex-husband and I think that's 
that's that's important and that's why we have so many great female characters on TV these days because people picked up on that and um, like to see real people in their journey you know so she was just a fantastic character and I thought the story was really interesting I think viruses are a real life threat for people but then when you mix the sci-fi on top of that um, and with Helix the unique part of Helix because there's a lot of outbreak shows that have come out recently too is that it's um, it's the psychological thriller that's a real trip just watching people have to be stuck in what what are they going to do to survive and, and being in these environments where they're going to do things that they wouldn't typically do in regular circumstances so the first season was more like a submarine show just, you know like everyone's in this closed box mm-hmm. season two is more expansive in location how does that change the emotional vibe of the show um you're no longer in that box. Yeah, we can't go out. We, we can go outside now. <laughs> um, well, I think there's still going to be an element of claustrophobia, but in a different way. Because um, I'm not sure if we can talk about where the location is, but I think there's still an element of um, feeling trapped. But maybe trapped in a place of, I don't know where to go. You know what I mean? Whereas before it was just like, I don't really have anywhere to go, so there's no choice here. Um I think so, yeah. So everything we know about Julia up to this point, do you think that's going to change in season two? And do you think we're going to have to either scrub that or try to try to learn how she's going to change? I think, um, do, do you mean, is she evolved from where she was in season one? I think she absolutely does. I think the core of who she is and how she... Um, how she deals will, will still be there. She still has the same... She, it, you know, it's, it's kind of like how people say you can never change someone. There's a part of that that's true. It's like you're a product of your environment and there's a piece of your personality that's not going to go anywhere. But um, she's definitely evolved. And she's, um, and she's got to deal with what she's evolved into and, and, um, and picking sides in order to, to survive or to do the right thing or the wrong thing or whatever it's going to be. She's definitely going to become something different and and also she's gone through so much I think that does something to a person uh, two weeks of that kind of trauma you know it's um, and that was something we discussed at the end of last season when there was one scene that um, I had been captured surprise surprise and I uh, <laughs> I come out and and the way it was written in the stage direction was like this big emotional downpour and I said you know what she's already done that and I think that my, my dad's a Vietnam vet, you know what I mean? And sometimes I get fascinated by his war stories when he's willing to talk to me about them and things like that. And it's just, when you watch people or, or know about people who've been through real trauma and real things, there's a certain guard that comes up and a certain uh, power. And you might lose some aspects of, of something, but you gain something else in order to keep going. Um, so... So yeah, she's definitely evolving into something, but uh, she might she might have to do more in order to keep going. So that that, that could be more interesting for season two. Now you mentioned your physical training prior. Mm-hmm. What now? Because you did like kickboxing and you've done some martial arts. Yeah, I've dabbled in a lot of stuff. Just a lot of it to do with. Um, things that I would book and also just because when I was young I moved to New York and I thought I it was during a time I was like 20 and just out of undergrad and I thought I need to feel safe so I started kickboxing it was around when a lot of women weren't doing that yet so it was kind of weird but um but it was uh yeah I've liked to dab into a lot of different things you still do any of that kind of training and are you a fan of like watching it on TV I'm I'm a fan of I love doing it because and especially on TV and and it's just so fun to do physical work in a scene Um, it's it's just there's a story to it and I just think that's really cool and um, I'm also a mom I've got a daughter and a son and I feel like when you look at the world and I think about some of the things I wish I had more of when I was younger I just I, I I want my daughter to be a part of understanding how to take care of herself in a sense that it's not necessarily about what you can do to a person. It's about how not to get into a fight, but it's about how to just carry yourself and know that you have some way of having a fight in you, <laughs> you know, if, if, if the time comes. So um, I am a big fan of, of action. I, I, I like it. I think it's fun um, when it's done well. Um, so I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. I was just going to say, how did that training 
help you with like shows like Helix or any of the other acting jobs? Well, what was cool about Helix, actually, because I've done a lot of things where just because of my look, it's like, oh, you're the bad girl and you're going to come in with guns and leather and <laughs> knives and stuff. Um, what was cool about it is Julia is not a fighter. But she just has a fighter spirit, I think, in her personality. But I was getting attacked, but it was very sloppy action, which I thought was great because we're not fighters. We're doctors. We don't know what we're doing. But um, the physical work I did with the sickness was um, uh, old dance training. It was like creative training to try to figure out the like the the movements that I was going to do to where I felt the virus and where I felt better and how I would hold myself. And I, I took some inspiration from Neil from the beginning, even though he becomes that kind of vector and I'm, my character was dying, but, um, but I still took pieces of watching what he was doing physically, where his center was. And then once I got my silver eyes, I was just watching hero just to see how does he, how does he move and how does he deal and how does he how does he do things and so um you just take pieces pieces from everywhere and kind of put it together and hope it plays on camera thank you so much take care